Hello, I'm Ian Wall, founder and clinical director of St. Louis Allergy Relief Center in Chesterfield, Missouri, and welcome you to another Q&A video from the Allergy Relievers. Lately, I've received some emails from patients asking me if I know how long the coronavirus or COVID-19 lasts on the things that we touch every day. Considering how frightened people are and how much misinformation there is online, I thought that was a great question. The coronavirus that causes COVID-19 mainly spreads when someone who is infected coughs or sneezes. You know, they send droplets containing the virus into the air and a healthy person then breathes in those droplets. However, it is true that you can also catch the virus if you touch a surface or an object that has the virus on it and then you touch your mouth, nose, or eyes. Now, it's the touching of your mouth, nose, or eyes that transfers that virus into your body. If it stays on your hands, well, washing for 20 seconds with soap and warm water will take care of the problem. And it's true that the coronavirus can live for hours or days on surfaces like countertops and doorknobs, but actually how long it survives depends on the material the surface is made from. So this is a guide to how long coronaviruses, of which COVID-19 is only one, can actually live on some of the surfaces that you are probably touching on a daily basis. Keep in mind that COVID-19 is a new coronavirus. Researchers, as of the end of March 2020, don't know whether exposure to heat or cold or sunlight will affect how long it lives on surfaces. So all the information I'm giving you is based on coronaviruses in general. The CDC can only extrapolate that to COVID-19 as research is just now developing on this new coronaviral strain. So let's start. Metal, such as doorknobs, jewelry, metal eyeglass frames, silverware. Well, the last about five days, that's a long time. Wood, such as furniture, decks, um, about four days. Now plastics, when I say plastics, we're talking about packaging, milk containers, detergent bottles, plastic water bottles, um, plastic molded seats you find in buses or schools, uh, plastic backpacks, elevator and ATM buttons, plastic eyeglass frames, and polycarbonate, polycarbonate excuse me, eyeglass lenses. And that'll last between two to three days on those surfaces. Stainless steel. Well, those would be refrigerators, pots and pans, sinks, some water bottles. Uh, two to three days it can last. Cardboard, such as shipping boxes and shoe boxes, you're talking about 24 hours. Now, copper, like pennies and some cookware that has copper bottoms or some copper cookware that's sold, it can uh, stay alive on those surfaces for about four hours. Aluminum, which would be soda cans, uh, aluminum foil, certain water bottles, around two to eight hours. Glass, this is very important because we're talking drinking glasses, measuring cups, mirrors, windows, uh, up to five days. Um, ceramics, like dishes, pottery, mugs, about five days. Now, paper presents a bit of a problem. You see the length of time that a coronavirus can live on paper varies. Some strains of coronavirus live for only a few minutes on paper, while others live up to five days. So I can't give you a better answer regarding paper until more research is completed. Now, food. Coronavirus doesn't seem to spread through exposure to our food, at least that's what we're told. Um, but you have no idea if someone has shed the virus on any fresh fruit or vegetables that you're buying at the store. Therefore, it's imperative now to wash fruits and vegetables before you eat them, or before you even put them away. Scrub them with any veggie wash or even mild soap and water. Use a brush or your hands to remove any of the germs that might still be on their surface. And when you come home from the supermarket, you should always wash your hands before you wash your fruits and vegetables. If you have a weakened immune system, you might want to consider buying frozen or canned produce too. 
Now, I want to talk about water because I actually got an email about asking me about water. Coronavirus hasn't been found in drinking water. Now, experts say if it should get into the water supply, your local water treatment plant filters and disinfects water in such a way that that should take care of any problems. But again, this is true for the coronaviruses in general. We don't really know at this time if coronavirus 19 or COVID-19 really responds exactly as other coronaviruses do. But current research does show we don't have to worry about our water supply. Let's talk about fabrics and clothing now. Coronaviruses can live on a variety of fabrics from a few hours to about a day. And washing clothes takes care of it. So wash your clothes when you come in from outside. Now what else can you do? Well, we've already talked about this. You can clean and disinfect all surfaces and objects in your home and office every day. But that would include your countertops, doorknobs, tables, um, bathroom fixtures, phones, keyboards, remote controls, toilets, your favorite pen. Um, use a household cleaning spray or wipe, it's fine. Or you can use soap and water and then disinfect them. Even if everyone in your home is healthy, you still should keep the surfaces clean. People who are infected may not show symptoms, but they can still shed the virus onto other surfaces. After you visit the drugstore or supermarket or bring in takeout or delivered food or any package, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and warm water. Now I'm gonna repeat the mantra you've heard these past few weeks. Hand washing is the most important step you can take to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So don't get so obsessed with disinfecting surfaces and washing clothes that you actually forget to wash your hands and then go and touch your face. One last caveat. All this information that I'm giving you is accurate as of March 31, 2020. However, as the situation surrounding COVID-19 continues to evolve, it's possible that some data have changed since recording this. As you're watching, I don't know when you're gonna watch this. So while I try to keep as up to date as possible, I encourage you to stay informed on news and recommendations from the CDC and your local public health departments. Now, if you live in the St. Louis County area, we have on our Facebook page at St. Louis Allergy Relief, a PSA from them that'll tell you where you can go or where you call and who to call based upon where you live in St. Louis or the county. If you think you have the symptoms of COVID-19. Well, I hope you learned something useful from today's video. And at this time, please continue practicing social distancing, or as my wife Beverly prefers to call it, distant socializing. Follow the CDC and WHO recommendations, such as the ones I've mentioned. And also, please pray for those who have been diagnosed and are very sick with COVID-19. And include all the families who cannot be with their very sick loved ones due to the quarantines. And as well, as for all those angels working in healthcare, hospitals, nursing homes, and other essential services, such as police, fire, military, postal service, delivery and distribution centers, and your grocery stores, where would we be without them? Once again, this is Ian Wall for the Allergy Relievers at St. Louis Allergy Relief Center, wishing you and your family good health. Thank you for watching, and please, Take care of yourselves and your families.